Hello, I'm Andrew Gowdy, and um, our, uh, my family roots go way back in town, and, and they've asked me to tell a little bit of history about the part of the school, the boiler and the basement, and some of the things that aren't normally seen. Because of uh, the fact I worked for Doyle Crook, as we're out front of Doyle Crook's Rose Garden, um, Doyle Crook, I worked for him uh, from 1976 till uh, fall of 1979 and uh, spent a lot of time taking care of uh, things in the building, the basement and the uh, boiler and all things like that. And I've been asked to, to give a little bit of a foundation, a little bit of background of some of the things that go there. To get an understanding of that, I'm gonna walk around, we'll walk around and uh, see that the building was built in uh, different stages. This part that we're in front of right now is the very first and early part. And it, dates back to 1903, where it was the original four square building where it was very simple and um, basic. But as you can, one of the other things that gives me tie in here, uh, my great great grandfather Christian Olson did the stonework for here and there will be lots of places as you can see the, the different stonework. This was the original part of the old part of the building. The brick that they used to make this old school is uh, this is uh, really a soft brick, and there were some clay beds on the north end of Santa Cruz, almost down where the uh, Orchard Cove playground is. Then there was some old clay beds where they would dig and, and uh, mold and fire their own brick. And that is where this part of the the bricks came from was from north of town. You know, there was kind of a brickyard there. This other brick is a harder brick and been uh, fired a little bit better. This was probably fired with cedar wood and uh, it was kiln, kiln, uh, and it just was a softer, more porous kind of a brick. It's one of those things that are kind of fun to see the difference on that. All right, this is a the area where the oldest part of the school meets the second oldest part of the school and this is uh, where the door is to go down and check the boiler uh, the old coal chute is over there where the gas pipes are going into now one of the interesting things about the custodians of the old school they had to live close by from here you can see where there were two different uh, Holmes of the old custodians, old Keith Holman, was over there on uh, First East, his home was, and then uh, right across the road and up uh, is where Lee Christensen, and Lee Christensen was one of the old early uh, custodians of the school, and they had to uh, keep the boiler going, keep the fire going. Originally it was probably a wood system, but from my knowledge I'm going to go from the point where it was coal, slag coal, and they would back a truck up over here and dump the coal in, and then the custodian had to be the one to go in and, and take the slag coal and put it into an auger that would keep the boiler going. Uh, it would probably have to be checked every eight to 10 hours, and so consequently, it was handy for a custodian to live close by. Like I said, my knowledge of this goes from um, Keith, uh, the, the Holman, and then Lee Christensen, then Grant Johnson was um, prior to Lee Christensen, and right after Lee Christensen was Doyle Crook. And, and uh, by the time Doyle was the custodian, they had a gas-fired boiler, which made it so much easier. But uh, we'll, we'll go down. This is where the, um, the custodians would go in and just go right down into the boiler room without, and first off, there's a entrance into the basement here, and now we'll go around and, and uh, take it from there. Okay, now we're coming in from the outside on, off, down into the boiler room, and uh, all the different things. You can see the handy rock work that is done all the way around. Uh, the old, like I say, Christian Oats, the old pioneers on the old four square, how primitive it is. A lot of handiwork. Uh, they were artists of their own trade, working with rocks. <clears throat> the old boiler uh, was right in this area. Uh, you can see the the gas boiler that I was uh, familiar with when I worked for Doyle. 
there's part of the ring there and the doors are down here and it was a big steam boiler uh, it was a it produced the building was heated with steam that went into the radiators and it went throughout the buildings but prior to that then they they as i said then the custodians uh, whoever they were had to haul the coal in and keep things going one of the custodians grant johnson um, he spent quite a bit of time he was quite a little artist in his own way and we can see the different murals that he sat here as he was firing up the uh, coal boiler and the coal furnace uh, he did some uh, painting on, on the different different murals all the way around here that are kind of fun to see here we have three cowboys sitting around with their teepee tent oh that's a regular wall tent there on this and um, and as we go around throughout we'll point out the different uh, artwork that he did do we'll go over to uh, the coal bin as we said before all right in this uh, the coal bin as i pointed out outside they would back up their outfits and and pour the coal in here and, it, and like I said, then it was slag coal that they would uh, run the, uh, the early boilers with. I don't know that it was the original one, but I do know that uh, Doyle used to tell me that they had to fill this room clear full uh, three or four times a year to keep it going. Um, as you can see in different places on the door, they had uh, wood slats that they, as the, coal was in here so deep uh, higher than the door then they'd have these different slats that would uh, they put the board in so they could access the coal and and take it into there but um, the, here again it's fun to see all the different rock work and and uh, the different layers of concrete as the people who built this the workers uh, they, they put a lot of work into just the concrete. It wasn't just one pour. You can see all the different um, sections and how the concrete was poured in here. But it's kind of a fun room. And like I said, the, the woodwork, the, where the slats were for the bins and, uh, and to, to fill this whole room with the coal. Here it's fun to look and see some more of, um, of Grant Johnson's painting. There we've got a guy here with a gun in his hand and there's trees and different things on this mural that he used some of these flat rocks to paint on. And down below we have a, a teepee, an Indian sitting there. Um, and he did a wagon pulled by oxen on this side. The years and things have eroded a lot of it off, but it's still kind of fun to see that as kind of a little bit of a mark that he left behind probably while he was waiting for the building to warm up and monitoring some of the things and he was able to uh, spend a little time there. But these are some of the, the murals that a lot of people talk about and a lot of people want to come in and see. But because of the danger, uh, putting in the new boiler, they, this is uh, the most recent one. They put this in when they used the city offices for uh, when they used the, the junior high part of the building as the offices and this is pretty high tech and, and I think it was in in the 80s, 90s, uh, the early 90s is when they put this in. And, uh, and so like I mentioned before, when the gas came into Sanaquin, the natural gas, then they took the coal fired <coughs> boiler out and they put in the natural gas one. That's what, the one that I was familiar with when Doyle was running things, uh, when he was the custodian here. And, I would oftentimes when he was out of town would have to come down and you have to check the, the pressure, the steam pressure and make sure the compressors are going and everything's working the way they were. And even on the weekends, we'd come in uh, most every day on the weekend just to make sure. So because of the length of time that it takes to warm up a building like this, it's a lot easier to warm it up and keep it warm than it is to go up and down and with the temperature as well as the um, problems that it causes to the the bricks and the walls and everything the movement of the heating up and, and cooling down but uh, but this is a pretty nice modern day 
steam boiler that they put in there. So totally different than what we were used to. And so consequently, uh, with that, then we have a whole different set of ductwork and a whole different set of, uh, the, of things that make it almost impossible to have <laughs> visitors come by and visit because uh, you can bump your head and might have to crawl down. So, so that's why um, Annette and, and her crew has suggested that this might be a fun way for people to see some of the things that are in the boiler without having to um, put people in danger of bumping their heads. <laughs> All right, this little area here is kind of where um, the maintenance, uh, where we did a little bit of the shop uh, work, uh, any kind of repairs and pipe, fixing pipes, and, and we had a workbench here, vices and things like that. And um, one of the things, I still can smell it here a little bit, but the, um, for years and years, the dressing that you use on your mops for d doing dust mopping throughout the halls was made out of banana oil. And we always would have uh, mops that were being soaked in that banana oil. And uh, this is where we do it. And there's still a, a hint of a smell of the old banana oil that uh, was used for that. Uh, when I was, well, back in the 60s, 63 during the Cold War, then they've designated different places in different towns and areas to be uh, fallout shelters and when I was here then these back areas were full of 17 and a half gallon barrels full of crackers or water or medical supplies uh, they had uh, some that were full of uh, folded toilet tissue that was more like toilet sandpaper but they were uh, they were uh, some containers and they were all over in these back areas the crawl spaces uh, in case they needed to use this part of the building as a, a fallout shelter. Through this little crawl space, they left a few crawl spaces to get under. All the rooms originally had water piped into them and uh, the different um, sinks and the drains, and so everything had a little bit of a crawl space, and it's just barely a crawl space. But uh, once again, you can look through there and see the part of the foundation. And uh, the way Doyle explained to me is that's the direction where the foundation of the old Fort Santaquin was because it was on the south side of the school, on the, on the south and west part of here. So that's kind of a fun little thing to look in and see. All right, this is, as you can see, I told you about the fallout shelter sign that was uh, uh, information for if there was a nuclear attack, then there'd probably be enough room in there for two or three people. <laughs> but there's crackers for everyone. All you need to do is bring your own cheese. But um, yeah, that concludes our uh, little bit of a tour of the boiler room of, of Santa, the old Santa Cruz School. Like I said, I'm not a I'm not a professional or not a historian about this. I just lived longer than the other people who had a little bit of a knowledge of the boiler room. And that's the only way I got uh, inducted into this job. But um, come, come April, last part of April, the museum will be back open on uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays. We invite you guys to come and see. There's just so much knowledge, and it's so fun to look through all the different uh, things they have, the information, the books, the scrapbooks that people put together are fascinating to just take a little bit of time. The pictures they have hung of the different families, the different people, it doesn't take long. You find out that you were maybe related to some of them. So anyway, thank you for your time. If you have any questions, call me. <laughs> Thanks. We'll see you. <laughs>